sports. You look at the games this weekend. TCU at West Virginia, Oklahoma in Ames against Iowa State, Baylor plays in Lubbock against Texas Tech, and Oklahoma State on the road against Kansas State. Of those four games, and including the eight teams, specifically for this week, who has the most must-win situation in your opinion? Eli already kind of told me this before the show, so I don't want to give credit where credit is due, but I totally agree with him. I think it is Kansas State because if you look at teams like Baylor and Texas Tech, you know, look, yeah, you can say that's a must win, but they're already on the outside looking in, so a lot of stuff has to happen around them for them to be in this. But for Kansas State to stay out of Baylor and Texas Tech situation, they need to win against Oklahoma State this week at home and and, and keep – pace in the Big 12 race. If they've already lost to TCU and then they lose to Oklahoma State, they would drop a couple of games behind Oklahoma State, three games behind is or two games behind TCU and two, a game behind Oklahoma State and have lost both of the upcoming or potential tiebreakers. Craig, in your opinion, who might it be? Uh, it's TCU. They've got to win this game to keep their playoff hopes alive. So I say, you know, okay. if you want to be unbeaten, if you want to go, you know, run the table, get yourself into a position to get in the playoff, have all of these incredible, you know, accomplishments. Uh, I think you got to win this weekend. Obviously, you lose to West Virginia, and the Big 12 title's still up for grabs. Um, but you know, also still a big bowl game would, would potentially be yours. I mean, as we saw last year, Baylor winning the, uh, you know, winning the Big 12 title went to the Sugar Bowl. Uh, Oklahoma State went to what was the Fiesta Bowl, right? So, you know, you're, you're wanting to play in one of those types of games. But, yeah, you're wanting to win the conference. And then, you know, if you got a little bit more than that uh, as far as nationally, uh, yeah, that's what you'd like. That's what you play for. So I, I say it's TCU, even though it's not the, you know, the big, sexy, top 10 opponent, uh, you know, whatever, like some of these other games might be or some of their games might be moving forward. I, I go with the Frogs. I absolutely stand corrected with what I was going to say. You have elimination games in a lot of way again this weekend with uh, especially Baylor and Texas Tech if they want to stay in the race. You think about Kansas State because they need to stay at near the top with Oklahoma State, but I, I'm an idiot. I was thinking about uh, the Big 12 purposes, and Craig Wright, he's talking about the national picture, well, and let's not forget where TCU is. But that, And that's been a, maybe a problem with the Big 12 and, yes. and, and schools in Texas where they only look – here and not here and so yeah craig craig threw down that trump card really big yep that that that's very true not only that they're playing at west virginia on the road which baylor knows all too well can can undo your whole national championship hosts hopes when you lose and if they lose one game they're out of it anyway but even if it's a hodgepodge of teams that lose one game for the the fourth spot they're not going to get it because they lost to West Virginia so it's not only that they could lose it's who they could lose to this week so that's a yeah, great, it's kind great of a double point. Never, I was thinking I was thinking about it in two two smaller terms and from Queer to uh, 12 TCU uh Queer 12 and 1 T 12 and 1 TCU won't get in the committee doesn't really want to put him 13-0 in. They have to win out and leave no doubt. Querte, thanks for the feedback on that. Buckshot kid, TCU needs to beat down West Virginia to prove they can be a team that could also blow out teams. Paxton says 12-1 TCU absolutely gets in. Mm. And, and a lot of other – Daniel said he thinks Oklahoma is the must win. It's a very – uh, there's a lot of array of how you could answer this based on how you're it's, looking at it, but nationally, TCU really the only one left. Oklahoma State with an outside chance, just like last year, if they were to run the table and win the Big 12 championship too. Yeah, I mean, but absolutely no room for error at all. Not, I mean, they have, you know, no no room for error. So, yeah, TCU, I mean, really the, the only team that, uh, you know, is, is undefeated, like I said, so that's why it just goes to the top of mind for me. And then I, I think there are obviously other big games. Like, yeah, I think it'd be important for Oklahoma to win this weekend just to keep their their confidence building. Um, you know, I think it'd be huge for Iowa State to win this weekend just to get a win in Big 12 play, right? Uh, Oklahoma State, obviously we know the stakes there. And then K-State, the walking wounded at the moment, and they could really use a, a win to keep their Big 12 hopes alive as well. So uh, perhaps, if anything, and based on the, the Tech fans and my, my mentions that I, I discovered about 10 minutes ago, uh, this, this, West, uh, this Texas Tech-Baylor game is the, the, least, the game that matters the least. This game doesn't matter that much. It doesn't matter to them. 
It doesn't. Uh, it's, it's no big deal. So we've, we've just been hyping this up way too much. Well, I, I, not on the chat room yesterday. My goodness, uh, it was uh, full throttle. It got to the point we we're talking about who's going to win the game. Who's, and then it got to a point who had the what city was prettier or not. And it, it got a little bit out of hand, but it is at times. And I said this to a lot of you yesterday. There's no need for to, to, to kind of take it into the gutter, which some of you just want to do, and you just keep it. No, no need for it. I know it's a chat room. I know message boards. I get it. I understand social media in other ways as well. But, um, all right, so that's uh, that. I'll also tell you this, on which college town is prettier is a 50-50 shot because some college towns outside of the college, a lot of the colleges are beautiful, but outside of it is a cesspool and dirty. You know, yeah. the campus is great. The city is terrible. So you got a 50-50 shot. College towns are all over the place when it comes they, to. They, there's they a lot sure of things can. you can argue about. Yeah. Uh, that is, is one amongst the, uh, you know, the, the tamest, I think, of all of them. And, no, I guess – I was saying yesterday we were talking about the buildup for this game, and I don't know. I guess that I'm wrong that a blackout on Patrick Mahomes and all these things aren't, aren't aren't really that big of a deal. And I don't know if my words are getting twisted. If I just delivered the message wrong, did I did I make it sound like I thought that Texas Tech was like calling this the night game, like they scheduled this, and that you know they made the Chiefs have a bye week this week and all that? I don't think that I said it that way, no. but apparently, to those who received it, some in in the fan base. I made it to sound like this was all done. Um, how would you explain Specifically it? Because Specifically because Baylor's for gonna, Baylor and all yeah. this other stuff. And I think my point was just like, I mean, the storylines are clear, whether it's the same records, whether it's the jostling for the current state of the Big 12, whether it's the future of the Big 12, whether it's the Joey McGuire connections, whether it's the 10 plus staff members, whether it's Grant Task to grandsons, whether it's, you know, all of the different things, all the different crossover you want to play. I don't know. I think that all makes for a pretty big game, and then you add in a blackout and a night game, and you add in all those things, and it, it makes for a really fiery affair, and I think that's really all my point was, was that this is a massive game for Texas Tech. Like, they're going all out for it, and I wrote in another piece that, you know, you would expect them to given the TV time slot and given the weekend, and yeah, I understand when NFL stars are available. I've done this a little while now, so... I don't know. Maybe I'm making too much of this game. I guess it doesn't matter that much, and this is just a, a ho-hum, just another another game just like playing McNeese State or something. So I guess, you know, nothing to worry about this weekend, really. It's all just going to be really tame and calm and not really matter in the end. I It'll know you a, guys don't want me, huh? A game of Connect Four. Just yeah. <laughs> I, I know I know that sometimes when I go here, but you know what? There's too much bitching and moaning oh, look, about it's, coverage it's not, and all yeah. this and looking at opinions. And I went down that rabbit hole with Oklahoma State fans after we discussed Texas, and I stayed on the uh, – the replay for a long, long time, and I get emails when someone responds, and it's really 75, 25 who agree with how we went about it and what we do, oh, and that's, that's fine. But thank you for watching. Yeah. We appreciate that. We damn sure. I'll make very clear. We're not here for clicks and views. We understand that that feeds YouTube and whatever else. We're here to give you information, to discuss things, and give you a chance to have an opinion, but we appreciate <laughs> your time. I do want to shout out, because I, I knew this was coming this week. Of all weeks, like you saw Texas Tech on the schedule, and I just knew this was going to be a week with a lot of just talk and stuff like that. But the person, um, the the one tweet I saw that I have to go back and find, but that did do the clicks and like, oh, I should get the clicks and views. You are the most clueless person in the world if you're accusing me of trying to get clicks and views, brother, sister, whoever you are. You have you are talking out of your backside if you're going to accuse me of all people of doing that. So I, I just laugh when I see some of these dumb tweets. But I expected it because I. I don't know. I thought this was a big game, and I think that it is based on the emotions in play. And I think that when you see that crowd uh, on Saturday night and the all black, and I'm sure we'll see some shots of Patrick Mahomes waving his towel or whatever the case may be, it's going to feel like a big game because it is a big game, and, and that's just really the point of it all. And I, I do think that, yeah, this game matters to Texas Tech. I don't think it's the biggest game they played all year. I don't think I said that uh, either. Maybe I did. If I did, that I I'm lumping that in with just – tied for their biggest games of the year. But regardless, um, this is a massive game. Like, whoever doesn't win this game might not make a bowl game. I, I was, and I, I don't know about Texas Tech, but uh, for Baylor, that'd be a disappointment. I don't know what the expectations are for Joey McGuire and company, but knowing him a little bit, uh, I would think that that would be a disappointment, even if it is your number one. So, yeah, I do think this is in some ways for both teams 
uh, a you know a, a big game. Yeah, absolutely, I do. I don't think that uh, you know this is any bigger than the next big game that you play. But for this week, for Saturday, this is a massive well, game. Is is the Big Twelve Conference going to open up and get easy the last five weeks? No, no, it's not. So that's a big game because again, if you're four and three and you need to get to six and six, you need to go. Uh, at least two and three down the stretch. And that's not a lot to ask when you talk about winning two out of five, but it is when all five of the games you play, you could lose. You know, this is not uh, the back end of the schedule, like the front end of, I'm, I don't mean to knock Syracuse, but like it's not the front end of the schedule where you can get to 4 0, where things are set up for you to get to 4 0. The front end of Kansas' schedule wasn't outside of West Virginia, I don't think they thought that, but. You know, they set things up so they can get to 4-0 and and then get in a conference and roll through. But that's what you try to do uh, a lot of times with scheduling. We'll talk about the Big Ten in a second. I think the entire Big Ten schedule is set up for most of the teams to be 4-0 and at the beginning of it next year. That's what they try and do. The back end of the schedule is always the hardest. All right, I'm going to say this, and I mean it sincerely. 